Okay, RPM uh, is a command line tool and keeps uh, track of package version and files uh, contained in it. Uh, so, what is this RPM and why do you want RPM? Okay, now we have some questions uh, and uh, let's speak to JR. Hi, Jair. Um, hi. Uh, so I was wondering, do you use the same uh, kickstart method to even uh, kickstart a VM? Okay. Or so is there any uh, yeah. other effective method that you could use? Okay. So, so let me uh, explain that. So you know, um, as a part of uh, today, uh, we have. Uh, uh, various forms of operating systems, so may, so may I want to call as, though it is not the case. Uh, one is installing everything on the bare metal. Uh, once we install something on the bare metal, we may choose to install uh, operating systems on top of that, right, if there is a virtualization layer there. So in, in, in that case, uh, what happens is uh, basically installing your VMs is normally done through cloning rather than a, a kickstart server. Oh, okay. So you okay. can do the cloning of Linux cloning even with that? Uh, yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I'll just show you, it, uh, sorry, uh, it's as simple as this. Uh, okay. Let me, uh, let me, if no, I take this. Yeah, okay. you no, know, if you're covering on the uh, further chapters up in the uh, further weeks, I don't. Uh -huh. know, I don't want to see it now. Yeah, it's I mean, okay. I, in the sense, when I say show you, I mean, I just just to show you what that means all about. Okay, okay fine. Uh, but, okay. but of course, we will talk extensively. I just pick one server here. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I uh, right click, and and then I say clone. It is as simple as that. So, uh, uh, okay. so it, you just clone it. So what happens is, uh, this, so that's why I was emphasizing as I was doing this, all bare metal. Uh, bare metal installs will go through your kickstart okay, okay okay that is uh, if you want to today we don't use uh, uh, i mean unless it's your desktop uh, if it's in your server side all server side is going through a hypervisor way right okay yeah, when i say hypervisor we install either a vmware or a microsoft hyper v or a zen server or any of these things so That's there, right. the first install, which is the bare metal, will go through a kickstart. But beyond, once the OS is in place or the hypervisor in place, we never move, uh, we never use kickstart again. Okay. Uh, uh, we we go through some kind of a cloning process, uh, okay. or or any other uh, method. Basically, it's, it's the cloning process. And I think uh, sometime back uh, somebody has asked this uh, this question. Uh, do we install your operating system through a configuration management system? So I, I, I told you some time back, configuration management system is only to uh, update your configuration files, right? Like yes, SRD sure. uh, But uh, we could use a provisioning, uh, uh, sorry, these, uh, uh, like a puppet and tools to actually in, uh, install your VMs. So uh, how, how does that happen? That, that, that all happens once your uh, your hypervisor okay so you you are getting this up uh, getting this stuff uh, yeah i got i have one other follow up question is yeah, that sure. so when you are cloning so what happens to the ip so you have to change the ip right the range uh, would be there for a even yeah see now <laughs> good question now now you are getting the yeah, yeah. See, this is where yeah, the, the, once your thought starts coming in, and you start putting this whole solution in place. Uh, very rightly said, when you clone, everything gets duplicated, right? Yes. Everything um, gets duplicated. So that is, yeah, everything uh, gets duplicated. So yes. for a bare so, uh, if I have a simple Linux install, all that, then I could clone it. But still, I have to change the IP. And I'm sure it will be a range that would be provided when I am having an ESXi clusters. So, for example, I will have a 
a class C or some kind of a range IP will be reserved. So I should be using one of those IP addresses. Am I right? Right. So, so let me explain that whole uh, situation to you. Once you clone your IP, your IP gets cloned, your MAC gets cloned, right? Your host name is so yeah. everything gets cloned. Uh, sorry, everything gets copied. Mm -hmm. I mean, literal duplication. So the first thing that we do is uh, in, in in these environments, we do not clone from an existing uh, existing system. We create what is called as a template before cloning. Uh, so when I say okay, okay. template, uh, what what do we mean is we uh, uh, now by any by uh, by any stretch of imagination we need to do at least one installation of your virtual machine through a kickstart server. Okay, so uh, having said all of this, I, I still need to do at least one VM through this process. There is no other way out for me. Uh, else, mm -hmm. else if if I can't do that, then I will have to go through this process of of P2V and stuff like that, which is a even tedious process of this. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. So if I don't do that, I, I have to do at least one VM through this Kickstarter installation, and that's about it. After that, we only clone. So I create this VM, and I do what is uh, called as a sys prep in uh, in in the. Uh, it's, it's actually a Windows uh, term, which is today applied in Unix. And when I say Unix, I mean Linux as well. Sysprep is a is a set of uh, is, is a tool which will literally clean up uh, which will literally clean up your uh, entire VM. That means uh, uh, if I go through that process, he will remove my MAC address, my IP address, my machine names, my log files, my SSH files, uh, and and anything that may be part of the duplication action. Okay, so we go through this process. Mm -hmm. Once this is done, this VM is an absolutely clean image without uh, uh, without any uh, any data which can be duplicated. It is a mm -hmm. absolutely clean image, and then we clone that. Okay. Okay. So basically, a boilerplate or a templates that you are creating. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then what happens is once you clone this, once you clone a, uh, once you clone a, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, sorry, an existing VM. And when that starts up, it automatically generates a MAC address. It gets its IP address, and uh, it may or may not have a machine name. Uh, now, uh, how do you then apply the other changes, right? You want to apply a machine name, or you want to install something, because it's an absolutely it's a it's a clean it's a clean slate, right? Now yes. this is where we use your puppet servers to do the rest of the implementation. So you are you getting this picture in now? Yes, now I'm getting it. So yeah, if you're further covering it on the other classes, yeah, I can wait. No, not an issue. But yeah, now yeah, I yeah, got yeah, the glimpse. Why I, 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 I uh, was talking so extensively is. Because you know these are those simple, simple, uh, uh, simple questions which uh, sometimes confuse. And once you can put all this in place, right, you get the full big picture. So uh, I, I, I hope you know to every, the rest of the class as well. So this is how the whole process happens. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So. Um, uh, I, I hope uh, I think these questions are very nice, and it, it, it helped us to put in a flow of this whole uh, solutioning, right? And it, it's most about uh, picturizing the solutioning, uh, the solution. That's where we all get into a problem. And uh, so now, very clearly, we are able to visualize where your uh, PHC environments are, okay? Uh, where your programming tools would come in, okay? And, and this whole concept of cloning. Uh, though uh, I mean, uh, cloning varies from place to place. Uh, what I, I what we saw in because I have a hypervisor on my laptop, that's why we were able to clone. But otherwise, uh, there are other methods to clone and and, and do things out. Okay. So RPMs, Red Hat Package Managers, and why do we require this? Uh, uh, now the thought is uh, 
we also need to automate our installation of our packages. Now, when I say packages here, it doesn't mean packages which are only coming in that CD-ROM which are released by Red Hat. We may also have to create our own package. So, how does this help? Once you create your own package, you can then use the same repository to install this. Now, your package may be as simple as a, a shell script or a, a Python script. Uh, and you're going to use this to actually, uh, you'll, you'll take this uh, file and then you convert it into an RPM. And once you convert it into an RPM, you can use yum to install. And this is where this whole process of application automation comes in. Okay, we talk so much of CI, CD, right? So your Jenkins servers, once somebody checks into the code, uh, uh, he he then pulls, uh, he, uh, then this code is pulled out uh, and using RPM or, so RPM is just one of the way of packaging. Okay, there are various, there are hundreds of ways to actually each one creates their own packaging tool and format and things like that. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, so this guy, uh, uh, the Jenkins, he checks this out, he takes this code, okay, and he creates a package of it. Basically, we are, uh, we are, what, what we are doing is, uh, um, we, we are, uh, we are kind of doing a tar of this uh, file, and we are putting a lot of other uh, management information. And then we'll see a, uh, we'll see a process of how we'll take a, a file, uh, just one line file, and how to create an RPM, and how can that, and how that can be distributed as a part of your activity. Okay, as a part of uh, this CI/CD search. Okay, so uh, we had RPMs, then why is this yum coming in, right? This is a little confusion. Okay, so RPM uh, is, is a tool to develop your packages, uh, is a tool to develop your packages, okay? Yum uh, is, a, is a repository, right? It's a repository to store those packages uh, in a form of a group so that uh, all the, uh, uh, you know, so, so all dependent packages can also be installed along with that. Okay, so, uh, so uh, I hope you're getting the difference between RPM and YAM. So uh, YAM, uh, uh, RPM, uh, so I want to cl clarify here, RPM can be used to build a package and it can also be used to install that individual package. Okay, it can also be used to install that in, uh, in individual package. Uh, whereas YUM is basically a repository. And uh, YUM is not the, again I want to tell you, YUM is not the only form of repository. There are various other forms of repository. And each one can create their own form of repository. Okay, so so like uh, uh, I mean I know uh, coming from one of these big guys, um, each one had their uh, had their own. They won't they won't even bother to use RPM. They had their own form of uh, packaging, and uh, they had their own form of repository. They'll create their own repository and use it to install. So, uh, but all as I said, all enterprises would prefer some kind of a standardization, and and they use YUM in a big way to do the. Uh, uh, installation if they're using on the Red Hat uh, because Red Hat being the largest uh, but if it is Ubuntu or SUSE then there are other forms of packaging and then installation. Okay, so YUM automatically resolves dependencies and determines which package needs to be installed in addition to performing a software successful package installation. RPM does not do this. It, it basically packages and installs that individual package alone. YUM also supports the concept of uh, package groups in which a list of related packages can be assembled into a group and installed by using the group name instead of individual name. So uh, I, I, I hope you could have, uh, if, if I uh, take uh, one of these systems, uh, okay. Uh, So if I would do this,
Okay, so can you see this uh, stuff? You could you could uh, package your applications into groups. So if you wanted a complete Java platform, it, and then you can just say yum group install as a uh, as a uh, Java platform, or you could have a development platform. So there are various ways you could uh, uh, group it, but these are default groups. Okay, these are groups which exist as part of your uh, uh, existing uh, uh, yum tools, uh, but you could group it that way. So yum also supports. Okay, yeah, I've done that. So yum is capable of downloading and installing packages via various transport protocols like HTTP, FTP, or from your local. And today everything is around FT, uh, uh, HTTP. So no more FTPs and no more NFS shares. Uh, NFS way of installing everything is got consolidated into the web way of doing things. Okay, it makes easier to maintain groups of machines without having to manually update each one using RPM directly. Okay, so I hope you understand what is YUM and what is RPM as of now. Huh? So YUM repository is a is a central location for all packages, and by using just a yum command packages can be uh, installed across thousands of nodes okay uh, now the first thing is how to know what your central locations are right that is the first thing you need to know so that so this is the place i think yesterday i went here right this is the place of these uh, location for uh, this is the place where you find the configuration file for that particular repository. Now, yesterday when I tried to install Nginx, uh, I couldn't install. So, by default, when you install your uh, CentOS, only these repositories come in. Okay, so what are these repositories? Each one of them shows you a repository of some respective application. Now, Nginx does not fall into the standard CentOS repository because this is an application developed by some company, uh, right? Some company or some organization, and he's he's not keeping it in the central server of a Cento uh, various CentOS operating system is. Right? So he keeps in a separate place. So that is why we have to point to that particular server, and that was located at here. So if I do, uh, okay. So uh, so in this, he will point out. Uh, as you see this here, he will uh, point. Uh, EPL is a central repository, okay, uh, which is uh, which is mirrors dot fedora dot whatever that place is. Here the nginx is located. Okay, so. Uh, so this part, uh, etcm repos dot d, is a place where you find all your uh, uh, pointers to the central server. So if some application is you are not able to install, that means you need to add that particular repository. Example, let's say, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you want to install, you know, Hadoop. So this may be not located here. So I will have to then go and point. I will have to then go to that particular process, uh, that particular repository. So uh, I, I know it is it is in there. So where do you go? I would need to go to say one of those three uh, standard guys. Your uh, um, uh, what do you say? Your uh, Hortonworks or uh, uh, Map or one of them, and they will have uh, your uh, 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 he will he will he will have that uh, file which is nothing but dot repo file telling where your central location is. Okay, so we have a process of going through this. Now uh, earlier uh, we had all of these configurations in an FTP and VSFTP and all these things. Now all this is dead. Uh, we are on we only have this repo through HTTP. Uh, that is one thing. We we can also create our own uh, repo server and then distribute it as well. Okay, so we can we will also see that small process of how to create our 
a repo and uh, this is what happens in an organization okay see we don't we don't allow any server to connect directly to the internet right we don't allow any server to connect to the internet directly that that's that should not happen so what do you do you create your own repo server within your organization uh, and uh, it could it can contain packages from various sources see when you create your own repo your own repo may be uh, serving hadoop as well as uh, uh, it, it may be serving hadoop as well as it may be serving in nginx okay so it could be one repository with all of these uh, 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 files uh, so what does the uh, repos contain it contains your rpm files and how do you create your rpm you use an rpm uh, rpm tool to create it. okay I hope you you are kind of understanding this now. Okay, so um, we we uh, I we we run through a lot of these. When I say yum and rpm uh, demo, the demo is nothing but running the commands, and uh, uh, we'll go through a lot of these commands. Uh, your yum and rpm. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can automatically uh, uh, we can uh, we can set automatic updates for yum and things like that. Uh, now, uh, yeah, we are not going to do this uh, often, and it, uh, though the uh, co the concept and the configuration and the, uh, the packages are there, we are not going to do this. Uh, primarily because we never update a, a production server as it is, right? So we do go through a, or, uh, we we could do a, a automatic update for your desktop, but that that's not the case with a, a server. We we will have to go through a completely different. Process of updating any server, right? Okay, so um, so this uh, uh, as I said, RPM is one way of actually creating a package. There are various ways to create a package. Why do you need to create a package without uh, without creating a package? I can't use yum as a tool to install, and that is why you need to create package. So, and how do you uh, and what do you do as a part of the package creation? Uh, we take a set of files. It could be, as I said, as simple as a bash script or a Perl script or a Python script, and then we create a .rpm out of it. That is the end goal. Okay, as simple as that. And then copy this into your uh, one of your repositories. So where is this repository going to be? That repository is going to be what we are going to create. Okay. Uh, so with uh, root privilege, the rpm command will. Uh, allow you to create a package so the basic procedure to build is get the source code uh, make a patch any changes uh, create a spec file and and then build it so it's just two things get your source create a spec file and then run it and we'll do this we'll do this as a part of your uh, labs okay so the spec uh, so spec file is a description of a software uh, Along with in instructions on how to build it, and a file list of for all the binaries that get installed. Okay, and and uh, it is normally a dot spec a file name with a dot spec. This ensures that the spec file remains intact during installation of your multiple RPM source RPM for various versions of the package. So, uh, okay. So one thing is, you know, as a part of your, uh, as a part of this DevOps activity, uh, uh, packaging is one important uh, um, uh, one important part. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, normally you will have a separate team who is handling uh, packaging uh, in, in 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 enterprise level. And and this is some activity. Uh, personally, saying even I'm not so thrilled about. Uh, it's it's a little uh, yeah it becomes a little mundane as as it uh, uh, goes along. It's, it's just good to see as a part of your lab and things. Uh, uh, but you have uh, you know a huge set of teams sitting and creating these uh, uh, packages. Uh, but whereas uh, uh, now I'll tell you how I used to use this. So when uh, uh, when when I used to write my own scripts, right? And I say scripts; uh, these are Python or Perl scripts, uh, which will do some activity. Uh, could be some monitoring or some, uh, or it could be a small socket program, whatever. Now, once I create these scripts, and I have to copy this across my, you know, 8,000 odd servers, 
and things like that, right? Uh, I can't just copy as it is. It has to go through a process. It has to. So how how do you go through this process? I, I take this pack. I take this files, convert first into a uh, an RPM uh, an RPM package. Uh, then uh, then you'll have to go through the uh, normal uh, you know cab the ITL process and stuff like that, and then push this into my uh, pro provisioning server, and then you you start the plan. Right. So you go through this whole process. So uh, in in that process, one part was to create my package because I'm creating that uh, uh, software myself. So uh, so it's only in those cases you would do. Uh, but ideally, yeah, you would not be doing this. But it's just good to know that you also know how to do what is this packaging as such. Okay, so this is a standard spec file. Uh, uh, I said right. So to how do you package? Uh, so to do package, it's it's very simple. You copy all your files in a particular uh, folder. Okay, there are actually three four folders that you create: uh, source, build, and spec, and th uh, things like that, and RPM. Uh, so uh, so in the spec directory, you'll have the spec file. Okay, it tells you the summary of that whole package. Uh, what does package? Its name, its version. Etc. Etc. Where the build build route is, uh, then what do you need to do uh, uh, as a part of it? Okay, and when you install, what are the uh, uh, directories that you may want to create? Uh, okay, uh, and 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 those entire information about uh, how, how yeah, if it is a C file, you will have to compile that. So all that information is kept in this uh, spec file. Okay, and I, I'll show you a simple one of this. So this is a general uh, spec file. Okay, it, it it contains a lot of these uh, information. Uh, um, okay, so you want to create a group, and this is it. Okay, so this this is a group that the package belongs to in a higher level package too, and this is how you create a group of files as well. And this is how you create your dependencies. It's it's in this place where you start creating your uh, dependencies itself as a part of that uh, uh, installation. Okay. Okay, so the group is used to tell high-level application program where where to place this particular program in its hierarchy, and you can you can uh, see that. And the build root allows you to specify a, a directory as the root for building and installing these new packages. You can use this to help your thing. And description tells you what are they. So this uh, this whole set of uh, uh, you know information that you find in your spec file. Uh, and as, as I said, uh, yeah, when you do one simple thing, you will kind of roughly understand uh, this particular file as such. Okay, this is a continuation of that file. There are a lot of options. Okay, even I, I, I won't know uh, much of these. Uh, I, I would only uh, do it. I, I know a few of it, which we, have, which I have used. Uh, but there are a lot of things, a lot of things that can get into. I mean. Uh, uh, you know, you you have actually a complete position for such kind of uh, activity. These are called the build managers. Uh, sorry, the build engineers. They go through this uh, complete uh, stuff of creating these packages. So there's a complete team, and, and they would know to such deep level. But uh, as 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 I say, um, you know, if you are building your own applications in this web environment, we won't have to use so many of these. Uh, Utilities. It's only very limited that we are going to actually use. Okay, and you can apply your patches. Okay, so this the whole uh, the whole process of uh, version controlling and uh, package management. I think there are a lot of that within your uh, within that particular spec file. And and there's also this uh, uh, build commands here to use. And once you use the build command, we're going to build it. But uh, anyway, we will see this as a part of that particular whole process. Okay. Uh, you also have if you do not get installed properly, right? Cleanup. So there is a cleanup process if things don't get installed. This is where you specify all those options actually. What do you do? 
when, when you say clean up is just basically deleting a file nothing more than that okay but you can specify all that in that particular spec file right? so this is what is this is what we call as reverting right sometimes the app installation failed how do you revert it's because of these options which are existing in that spec file right? inside part of your rpm okay uh, you can also create a, a pre install script a post install script and uninstall script okay so uh, I, i think now we're kind of basically understanding what this whatever that you do no as a as a part of a package uh, I, when i say you do you sometimes you install you sometimes uninstall where is that whole process defined it is here so uh, we, we might have quite often seen this in windows right we, we do this uninstall install and where where do you specify all that but in windows uh, we go the windows way but if it's in unix we go through this spec file and that's why you understand it a little more easily compared to what happens in your windows environment okay so again there is a lot of these um, yeah i am probably not sure why they have so much included but you don't require so much of these options to uh, to do it okay and you also have a change log okay so that is one of the most important part uh, as uh, the, the, the uh, process huh? and after all that uh, we are in a position to check if uh, things are installed uh, uh, so uh, rpm uh, so as i said rpm can be installed uh, using rpm you can install a single file but it does not resolve dependencies right i'll show you all those set of commands that uh, is possible today itself <coughs> Okay, so if you don't have yum, this is the way to install that single package. We, uh, I, I, I get, go through this uh, process. Okay, I, I have a set of uh, good amount of commands which gives you a decent way to go through this. So one of the commands is QA to command is just to query all the packages which are installed. Okay, if you want to know what is installed, you can uh, go through rpm minus a uh, QA. That is one way to check it. Okay. and a uh, queue is uh, used to query a particular uh, package so you want to just check if this package is there or not okay so that's another way to do that these are the commands basically yeah? we will run through them don't worry on that and if you want to know more information of that rpm package we can do a qi and it gives you all these things which you actually sourced it from your uh, uh, sourced it from your uh, Uh, when you created a spec, right? Uh, I, I told you there's a spec file which you create. So that information is got when you use a minus qi on a particular plan. Then, now, uh, if you want to see the list of packages uh, which are part of your uh, RPM. you can put an l and it shows you all the packages that are installed in that uh, sorry included in the part of the package okay then if you want to do an r uh, rp it shows you all the dependency packages which are part of the uh, that particular client okay uh, and then I, as i told you I'll, i'll go through this as a part of a lab in a very ordered way for now just understand that you have these options so instead of ivh you could also use an uvh uvh is uh, uh, says that <coughs> if the if the file is not there install it if the file is there update it okay and if you want to do an uninstall we use rpm minus u 